we're finding that there's a connection biblically between um, unconfessed sin and sickness. All right. Lesson number two on healing. So the first, uh, if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. Um, Dealing with elements of healing that are problematic is the only way I can describe it. We go to services. Um, I was at a camp recently up in Vermont and it was just incredible. People were being healed left and right. And then there were people who weren't. And people are like, um, how does that work? And so um, uh, I'm, I'm just learning to walk, walk through this. Um, but what, I, what I'm finding is there's conclusions that people come to with healing that's just not biblical. Um, you know, one of them is, well, God just, you know, well, here's my, here's the one that I, I don't like the most, but you know, God gave me this sickness to humble me. Uh, no, no, God does not do that. Um, you know, well, God just, you know, he just lets some people get sick and it's just, he's okay with it. No, you cannot implicate God. We're going to get into that more into the next video, but um, you can't implicate God in terms of healing. He provided for our healing. He's actually commanded us, commanded us to go and heal. He told the disciples, he didn't say pray about it. He said, go heal the sick. So we're going to, I don't want to get ahead. I don't want to get ahead. We're going to talk about that. But there's, so there's all this stuff swirling around healing. I want to give you some things that I've been finding out, some stuff that I've been studying that I think is is really helpful. Um, today's easy. Um, I want to give you a couple quick uh, verses uh, just to kind of kick us off. And and in this video, I want to, and this is a little touchy. Okay, so I'm not I'm not pointing a finger. I'm not judging. <laughs> okay, I'm not like condemning. But sometimes sickness and not being healed has to do with sin. Um, people who live sinful lifestyles, who make horrible choices, like ungodly choices, uh, leads to sickness in their body. And then they blame God for it. Come on, come on. And so there's a, there's a fundamental principle. Jesus teaches about it. Paul mentions it a couple different times. In fact, he mentions about it in Galatians and in, uh, I think it's second Corinthians chapter nine, but I'm just going to read this one here, um, for time. And it's, um, Galatians chapter six, and it's under this whole section of, of, um, doing good. But he says down in verse seven, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from the sinful nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to, uh, please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Um, Dude, if you go out and plant an apple tree and you expect pears, you're going to be in for a rude awakening come spring. It's going to take longer than just one spring, but you're, you're going to be disappointed. What, what you, you know, um, what, what you, what you, what you sow, you're going to reap. What was that movie? It just popped in my mind. Um, it was a Kung Fu Panda where Master Shifu and, and Uguay are out there and, you know, and you got to see it anyway. So, um, uh, you know, the, the peach falls on and all of that. And he says, you know, that'll always be a peach is what uh, Master Uguay says. Even Uguay gets it. <laughs> but my, my point is, I probably should cut that out, but, uh, or leave it. But, um, uh, what, what you reap, you will sow. Um, and so there, let me give you four things to think, think about just in terms of things that I have seen. And obviously not mentioned names. And it's one of the reasons I've been taking care of my body. I don't like exercising. It is not fun. Eating cereal at 10 o'clock or a large pizza before I go to bed, that's fun. You know, not eating and going to bed, feeling like I want to eat and, you know, hungry and then getting up and have to go run on the treadmill and lift weights. That for me is not fun, but I want to be a good steward of my body and I don't want to be, you know, hear this. I do not want to be incapacitated and limited, have limited mobility in my 60s because I was a glutton. I mean, in my denomination, I'm a Nazarene guy. Um you know, we make a big deal about alcohol and we should. Okay. Yeah. I just, I think you're going to get into trouble when you drink. Okay. Especially if you're going out to bars and that kind of stuff, just come on. But 
you know, in our denomination, we make, oh, I don't drink and I don't smoke and that kind of stuff. And they're like 150 pounds overweight, you know, with a funnel cake in their right hand and a you know soda in their left. And it's just like, yeah, look at you. You know, and you and you're miserable, and a lot, you know, and you and, and people come to you, and they're like, "Pray for my knee. I got terrible knee problems." It's probably because you're 150 pounds overweight, and you've been a horrible steward of your body. And I'm I'm not. Hear me, what I'm just saying that being a a poor steward of your body in terms of nutrition, your body was meant. You're like it's not meant to last forever. And um, this is this is hilarious. I went I went to this doctor, and this was. Uh, so my thirties were good. I was lifting weights. I was pumping weights, man. I was you know, almost trying to get, trying to bench 400 pounds. I was really close. And, and then I hurt my back. Um, and it wasn't from the bench. It was from doing some overhead presses. And anyway, so it put me down for about six months and it was just a stupid mistake. I wasn't wearing some of the equipment I should, a belt, I sh- I, you know, I hurt myself. So I had to take like six months off. And then I was just like, you know, I'm going to take a short break and a short break turned into a decade. Like my forties were horrible. And I mean, I lost like 40 pounds of muscle and put on like 50 pounds of fat and it was bad. And I don't really, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I care what I look like, you know, but that wasn't a motivation. Um, the motivation was I about had a heart, I had something like a heart attack in 2018 and I went to the doctor and my blood pressure was 160 over 110. And he was like, and he was brutal. He was brutal. My doctor, he's like, I thought you're a Christian. Aren't you supposed to be a good steward of your body? I was like, hey, do your doctor stuff. Leave the moral stuff to me, you know? And he was like, you're not going to live very long eating the way you're eating and living the way you're living. I mean, it was bad. And the Lord convicted me of it. He's like, I've got, I've got longevity. I've got plans, you know, that for you. I want to, I want to, I want to go do that. I want you to be a part of it, son. And and then it was also like, what was it going to look like when I have grandkids and I'm in my 60s? Um, I don't want to be, you know, immobile. I don't want to be glued to a chair watching them play, you know? So th- th- that's, this, this was personal for me. And so I did. I lost two pant sizes and, um, you know, I'm down to a 34 and I feel great and I'm, I'm running, you know, I'm, I'm lifting weights, I'm eating right, I'm eating healthy, my blood pressure's down, I'm not on any medication. So uh, I want to be a good steward of my body. So, um, you know, I could go to the Lord and be like, oh, Lord, I just feel lethargic and man, my heart, please pray for me. God's going to be like, dude, take the cheeseburger out of your mouth, you know, stop going to McDonald's every single day, that kind of stuff probably harped on that enough. So uh, eating and nutrition, lack of exercise. I just covered that. That was the second one. You know, you know, being a good steward of our body. In fact, I had a guy at a revival tell me, and this was so good. He said, the way you treat your body in your forties and fifties will determine how active and healthy you are in your sixties and seventies. And I was like, dude, I love that. And I, I want to be in my seventies and not, you know, on 50 different kinds of medication because of of just what I've done to myself. Okay. Uh, tobacco, alcohol, and drug use. Um, I, I actually met a guy, you know, you're going to laugh at this, but I met a guy to revival and he's like, yeah, man, God, God was convicting me about my lifestyle. And, and he finally gave me cancer and it woke me up and I turned around, I gave my life to the Lord and, you know, I quit smoking and all of that. And, and I was like, let me, let me shape a little bit of your theology here. Um, you, God gave you cancer. Oh yeah. You know why? Well, he wanted me to quit smoking. He'd smoked for like 45 years. I was like, is there a possibility that maybe God was saying quit smoking because it's going to give you cancer? And he was like, I never thought of that. I was like, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm here to help you. So we blame a lot of things on God. Not all of us would do that. Of course. I mean, but we blame things on God and we ask God to, we we go out and plant apple trees and then ask God to produce pears or peaches. Come on, man. What you see, what you sow, you're going to reap. And so if you're going to, if you're going to use drugs, you know, that are not prescription approved by a doctor, um, you know, for legit medical reasons, and you're using illicit drug, there's consequences to that, spiritual and physical. Alcoholism is, alcohol is terrible on your body, that kind of stuff. 
Um, and don't, someone's going to say, well, a glass of wine a day. I'm not talking about a glass of wine a day, okay? I'm talking about getting tanked on the weekends. It's not good for you. Uh, and then the last one, which I would like to go into this later on, Brooke Seabright at Lebanon House of Prayer has some awesome teaching on this. Um, and uh, El Hop, we, like, we're, are, they're in the city here. And so this is where we live. So we're really involved with what they're doing in the city. They're killing it. And uh, she's doing a lot of teaching on this. So you can go to the El Hop. Um, and we'll probably put a link in the bottom of this video uh, to their to their video, uh, to their YouTube channel where they teach on this kind of stuff. But we're finding that there's a connection biblically and there's a connection just what we're finding, you know, through experience between um, unconfessed sin and sickness. And this one's hard. This one's hard to find in scripture. I mean, I, I go through what you, what you sow, you're going to reap kind of a thing. And, but what we're finding is that, you know, when you sow into like worry and anxiety, doctors will tell you this, it produces ulcers, high blood pressure, stress. Okay. That's worry. It's a fundamental principle. Jesus says, dude, don't worry. Give me your life. Trust me. Walk in intimacy with me. Your body was not built. Listen to this. Your body was not built to live in anxiety and stress and fear. Wasn't built. If you live in chronic anxiety, stress, and fear, it's going to manifest in you physically. And so we're finding that like, and I, I, dude, I found this and it's, I mean, you can go to, you can go online and search different revivals that I've done. Go through Facebook. There's all these Facebook lives out there with me preaching and they, they showed the services. And, um, I'll give you, I was at this church. I'll give you one. I was at this church out in Texas and, um, uh, this lady, we prayed, she had this, had this disease and, uh, didn't tell me what it was, but it was a terminal disease. And we asked, we asked for prayer. We prayed for, her and she didn't feel any change or anything, but she started coming to the services. She hadn't come to services in 10 years. And in the middle of the, well, not in the middle, toward the end of the service, but before the altar call, she stands up and just starts crying and jumping up and down, praising the Lord. She was healed in the service. Didn't, no one prayed for her. We prayed for her earlier that week, but we didn't pray for her that day and end up talking to her after the service and come to find out she had this long history with that church that she had got a divorce in the church that her husband had cheated on her with another woman. And the church, for some reason, just kind of, I guess, apparently chose him from her perspective, but whatever, how that panned out, she was like bitterness and anger and like got retribution against him, got some legal trouble, I think, and just hatred, pure hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness in her life. And, you know, against this guy. And it just, you know, it manifested into a terminal disease. Now, you're going to probably look at me. Some people look at me and say, oh, that's not possible. And well, hear me out. She lived with it for, she lived in that for so long, it ended up bearing fruit in her life. And then she ended up coming to the revival and just like, I need to get my life right. And when she forgave in the service and, and it was like close to the altar call, when she asked for forgiveness and said, I, Hey, I forget, I repent. And she was healed of that terminal disease. And it was literally this, as a result of sin, whether you want to call it a demonic attack. I mean, I, I don't, can't look into her body. I don't know exactly how all that works, but I see fruit in it. I see fruit of a woman who lived in sin and it produced a certain kind of fruit. And then she repented and she was healed. And so sometimes we pray for people, you know, over issues, whether it would be simple, like not eating correctly, you know, they've got type two diabetes. I, I don't want to have diabetes anymore. Well, I can pray for you, but you should probably stop, you know, your sugar intake. Take it down, get off the carbs, no more pizza, uh, you know, get on a treadmill, exercise kind of stuff, lose some weight. It's easier on your joints. There's less inflammation, all of that kind of stuff. And you can pray. For, I prayed for people over these kinds of things. And you're like, ah, you know, can I give you some counsel without like crushing you? And I, you know, I want to do it in love. And then there's people you meet and they've got these just under the impression you've got these strange kind of things going on in your life. And it's, I don't ever be like, are you living in sin anywhere? <laughs> That's awkward. But, you know, there's a connection between sin and sickness in the scriptures. So um, that's, that's, 
you know, that's an important element of healing. It's, I think sometimes when we think of God healing and, and people getting healed, it's just, oh, we come to ask God in the name of Jesus be healed, bam, they're healed. Well, they're not, you know, and why? And well, we have a major, a ma we have free will and we have choice. We have a major role in, I believe, even in our, in our own healing. So that's video two and looking at the connection between sin and not being healed or sin and forgiveness of sin and being healed. So. It'll be exciting to uh, go through video three coming soon.